Welcome to the 60th Annual Academy Awards. Best Song nominees tonight. A three-time nominee and a winner of the coveted Oscar, Mr. Rod Steiger. And past Oscar winner last year with Richard Dean Anderson, Marley Matlin. Here's Mr. James Brooks. Faye Dunaway, the presenter in the foreign language film category. Richard Drivis, former Oscar winner. Former nominations for Johnny Belinda and All Quiet on the Western Front. Here's Mr. Lou Ayers. Lou Gossett, former Oscar winner for his role in An Officer and a Gentleman. Presenter Daryl Hammett, who appeared in Roxanne and Wall Street this year. And macho heartthrob Tom Selleck, who will present the Animated Short Film Award. Here's Eve Marie Sink from Off the Waterfront. And Sean Connery, both a nominee and a presenter tonight. Glamorous Jennifer Grey, who starred in Dirty Dancing. A supporting actor candidate for Moonstruck, Mr. Vincent Gardenia. Mr. Michael Douglas, the best actor hopeful for Wall Street. The co-producer of Fatal Attraction, beautiful Sherry Lansing. From the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse, who tabulate the balloting and guarantee the secrecy and integrity of the results, Mr. Frank Johnson and Mr. Dan Lyle. And Best Supporting Actress nominee for Girl Mama from the Frame, Anne Ramsey. Gorgeous Candy Bergen with Louis Maul, who's a double nominee this evening. A presenter in the cinematography category, Dashing Mel Gibson. A star of The Last Emperor and the presenter tonight, John Lowe. Nominated as Best Supporting Actress, Ms. Ann Archer. For his directing efforts in Moonstruck, nominee Norman Jewison. Two-time Oscar winner Jack Lemmon presenting the Thalberg Award. Olympia Dukakis, a candidate in Best Supporting Actress category. Thanks for coming. It's going to be a great night. I don't usually put a dinner jacket on at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but for this, you've got to do it. I can't blame you. Have a good time. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Good to see you. Don't let all these famous, beautiful people with elegant clothes and limousines looking so cool fool you. Because underneath this is a pretty nervous group with only one thing in their minds. You know why? Because they are the actors, writers, producers, directors, and technicians who made the pictures we're going to honor tonight and now find themselves as Oscar nominees. <laughs> I 
Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. Robert Wise. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the 60th anniversary of the Academy Awards. We have an evening of extraordinary nominees and absolutely unpredictable outcomes, and for you, and we're going to enjoy it all enormously. To make the occasion just a shade more festive, I have a remarkable piece of news for everyone, everyone in the world who cares deeply about the art of motion pictures. I'm delighted to report that the Academy has concluded an agreement this week with the city of Beverly Hills that will provide a new home for our burgeoning library and film archive in one of the city's most historic buildings. When the necessary architectural, architectural restoration work has been done, the career papers of industry giants from Max Sennett to Alfred Hitchcock, the historical records of major and minor studios, and all the other extraordinary materials in our collection will be housed under one magnificent Spanish Romanesque roof. So, thank you. So, so for those of you who ask what the Academy does on the days when we're not giving out Oscars, you have an invitation to come visit in about a year, and we'll have a dazzling answer for you then. And now for the night when we do give out Oscars, you distinguished men and women who have been nominated for an Academy Award this year have moved us, thrilled us, brought us laughter and tears, and we are grateful to you for the pleasure of your achievements. God, I hope you all can get it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is someone who's also moved us, thrilled us, brought us laughter and tears, but never got a nomination for it. Instead, last year, we dropped him through a trap door, almost had him eaten by a plant, my favorite master of ceremonies, the handsome, talented, and only slightly bruised, Mr. Chevy Chase. Good evening, Hollywood phonies. Welcome to Tinseltown, the Athens of the West. This is it, the biggest night of the year. Tonight will mark the beginning 
for a very few lucky people and the end of a lot of friendships. <laughs> now, as most of you know by now, there is a writer's strike. So just so you understand, none of this material has been written by me, a guild member, or any other writer, unless done so before and in anticipation of a pending strike. In fact, my entire monologue was generously donated by five Teamsters. <laughs> but the strike does present us with some problems and some advantages. It will substantially shorten the show, since there will be nothing for anybody to say. <laughs> so let's get right to it, shall we? Bertolucci, Nicholson, <laughs> you sir with love. No, just kidding, just kidding. Those are not the winners. Tonight, we've got a great lineup of presenters who don't need the written word to express themselves out here. And just in case they do, remember, there may be a writer's strike, but there is not a reader's strike. <laughs> Tonight, we have more big stars than any year I can remember. Of course, I can't vouch much for my short-term memory. I lost a few tiles on re-entry, but uh, it is a terrific lineup. We have a lot of funny comedians who are used to winging it, and that's lucky for us, because as you know, the names of the nominees were not known before the strike, so none of them could actually be written out on the envelopes or on the cue cards. <laughs> it means we're actually just gonna have to guess or go with our best instincts. So I'd like to offer my apologies in advance to those of you who are unmentioned this evening. This is not altogether out of keeping with most Academy Award years, in which many names who should have been mentioned have been forgotten. I can't think of a year in motion pictures with more quality performances or more critically acclaimed films. It's a real horse race in 1988. And most of the nominated stars are here, which is very unusual. The women are beautiful, and, and many of the men have showered. Glenn Close is here. Glenn Close is here with our obstetrician, just in case anything out of the ordinary pops up. And I have it on good authority that Cher will be, in fact, dressed. She apparently has decided against the simple but elegant wardrobe of just the dress shields and odor eaters and is going for the full body covering. Two of my favorite comedians, Albert Brooks and Robin Williams, are up for acting awards. It's always a good sign for the comedy community. Which, which brings me to the subject of critics. Now, many feel a movie can be made or broken by a critic, yet some of the most delightful and successful films have been panned, obviously not by the audiences. Critics are a strange species. Imagine a parent saying, son, when you grow up, I want you to spend all your time going to the movies. Then I want you to make a living writing about what a terrible experience it's been. <laughs> then maybe you can get a job on TV. See, critics are guys like well, you know, the one who says, I don't know what they're smoking in Hollywood, but if I see another one of his movies, I'm out of, out of the business. You know, guys like that. Oh, sure, some of them are real people. And for the most part, they're there to enlighten and educate and opinionate and analyze and to tear apart the work of hundreds of artists over a two-year period in the space of two minutes. <laughs> but good film criticism can be thought of as an art form. So this year, the Academy has closely considered giving out an award in a new category, Best Movie Critic. <laughs> Unfortunately, we found there weren't any. We did, however. We did, however, come up with the following possible categories. Strangest on-screen behavior by a critic. Critic most looking like a dripping candelabra. Critic with the strangest hair choices most long-winded written critic, and finally, TV critic couple most in love with themselves or each other. Let's face it, <laughs> without us, where would the critics be? We know where we'd be if we didn't have them. And now, quite seriously, a word about the rules. All eligible Academy members are asked to vote for nominations for Best Picture. Other nominations are voted by members who are specialists in each field. Results of the secret voting are known only to the independent accounting firm of Price Waterhouse. The girls in the office, Nancy, Catherine, Marty, all of them. <laughs> of course, myself, and Janie, my wife, and kids, a couple of friends. 
The ballots will then be tabulated, and the winners will be chosen honestly and according to the following criteria. If you're old and you haven't won one yet. <laughs> if you're relatively young or too funny and your name begins with Steve or Steven, you are ineligible. <laughs> If you live in the neighborhood and your movie's up for Best Picture, you cannot be nominated for Best Director. If you make fitness videos or commercial for, commercials for fitness centers, you are eligible. Beards are out, and of course, this simply will not do.